Hello everyone, my name is Delphine Chapin. I'm from Murdoch University and I'm going to talk about the dolphins in the Swan Canning River Park. In Perth Metropolitans, we have a lot of dolphins and in fact, our study actually showed that we have four distinct community of dolphins based on how dolphins associate together, but also based on which environments they generally see. In this graphic here, you see there are nodes. Each node is one individual. And in between this node, we have line. This is showing how dolphins connect together. And you can see that we have four groups of um, dolphins associated together. This ones also show from the map on the right side that they have the same home range. And each home range is actually showing in a different environment, such as this one canning river history, which is represented um, through Perth and Fremantle area, but also Cobbon Sands um, further south in the Sound. So more specifically, we have the northern waters, which cover one community of dolphins. Those ones are not resident dolphins. They are generally using the whole water, which is more exposed to the open water, but also only in the area for shorter term. On the other hand, in the southern part of Fremantle, we have two community of resident dolphins. We have the one in Owen Anchorage and another one in Cabinson. Both together, we have about 100 dolphins resident in this area, and most of them are actually in Carbon Sound. They are seen year-round and this for many years now. In the Swan Canning River Park, which is what we are interested in it today, we have a different environment. It's an estuarine environment where um, characteristics of water change a lot during the year. Their fluctuations actually made that environment more difficult, challenging for dolphins. But despite this, we do have a small resident community of dolphins there. They are seen year-round, they've been seen for many years, and we're actually seeing them on a daily basis. In fact, if you're looking at this graphic, I'll show you a little bit how many dolphins we have in history and how he has, that number has fluctuated over time. So we've been um, having between 21 and 31 resident dolphins, which included calves. And those fluctuations have been either because of birth of dolphins, but also some dolphins moving out of the estuary and changing completely their environment. In other way, we have some dolphin coming in the estuary and making the estuary behind their new home. But other um, impact or factor showing um, from that fluctuations is death of some dolphins. How do we know that we have 31 dolphins? Well, we can actually identify each dolphins looking at their dorsal fins. So as a researcher, I'll be taking photos of their dorsal fins. And as you can see on some of those photos here, they have like little niche, little notch. And with this, we can actually identify each dolphins just by looking at their dorsal fins. And we can keep a track of the history of each individual dolphins. And given that we have these informations for each individual, we've been able to actually provide you with a catalog of the dorsal fin. So it's also your turn trying to identify the dolphins in the estuary. And you'll find more information about dolphins' behavior. And this is all within the packages of the fin book. And you can find it on the River Guardian website. So, as I say, we have resident dolphins in the estuary between 21 and 31, depending on which year we've been looking at. But what we also know about this is that they actually use the whole estuary as well as Canning and the Swan Rivers. They've been moving up and down, mainly actually found in the Fremantle Harbour, Inner Harbour. The Fremantle Inner Harbour is actually one of the hotspots of our resident dolphins in the Swan Canning River Park. We also know from a research that I did, looking at the DNA of the dolphins, that they are all genetically connected to dolphins living in the adjacent water. And this actually telling us that 
not only are resident dolphins in the estuaries are not isolated, they do actually move in and out from the estuary and sometimes visit adjacent water. On the other hand, some dolphins from adjacent water may come and visit the estuary. In fact, we do know that some resident dolphins from the estuary, especially the males, will come back in the estuary with some females um, who are known to be resident in adjacent water. So as I say, our number have been fluctuated and some of the cause of it is because of death. In the S3, we have two major cause of death. The first one I'm going to say is the fish and line entanglements. Over the last 10 years, we've recorded six dolphins dying from severe injuries due to fish and line entanglements. And I'm not even talking about the dolphins who also had fish and line entanglements, but have survived so far. We also have two unusual mortality events, um, one within the last two, um, one year, which was um, in 2019. This unusual mortality event generally meant that we have between five and six dolphins who die in a very short time or within that year. And that is due to a mobility virus, the cetacean mobility virus more specifically, which affects the immune system of the dolphins. So as a conservation aspect for the dolphins in the Swan Canning River Park, it's really important to remember that we have a very small community of dolphins. And by this, I also mean that this community of resident dolphins is highly vulnerable to any change and um, challenging environment as such of the estuary and also all the impact that you have due to human developments, human hues of the rivers. We also know that dolphins have a very low reproductive rate in a sense that um, dolphins only reproduce once every three to six years. And therefore, with the addition that a generation takes 20 years to build up, it takes a long time for the numbers within this estuary to grow. And there are, of course, a lot of factors that cause injuries and, mort and mortality that are actually key conservation issue for us in the estuary, especially fish and line entanglements, which is one of them that can be actually treatable for us, managed much better. So what can we do to make sure that we protect the dolphins in the Swan Canning River Park? Well, first and foremost, and that's not just for dolphins, it's for all the wildlife, we have to keep the river park clean and tidy. If you have any rubbish, take it with you at home. There are a lot of real leading bins along the foreshore um, of the Swan Canning River Park. In fact, we have more than 60 of those bins. Make good use of them. They're there for you to dispose of any fishing line that you find. Now, if you're boating or you're jet skiing in the water and you do see dolphins or birds, make sure that you slow down and if you can, change your route so that you minimize the disturbance with the animals. One other thing, do not feed dolphins. They do have a lot of fish in the estuary, but also feeding dolphins will create more risk for them to get injured through boat tracks, but as well more fish in line entanglements. And for most, just enjoy dolphins in the water and share the enthusiasm with everyone. This is the end of the section. Thank you very much.